All right, let's keep going. It says here, a true false question, most companies will not take a purchase discount because one or two percent discounts are insignificant. So we want to remember that when we talk about uh, these percentages, one percent, two percent, um, we, we can't think of this as a percentage that we're going to apply to an entire year. These percentages generally apply to a period of about 10 days. So if you recall from the uh, PowerPoint presentation, uh, we talked about what was called implicit interest. And so if we don't, if we have terms of say, uh, for example, 210 uh, net 30, meaning that we get a 2% uh, discount if we pay within 10 days and the uh, net amount, uh, the bill, if, even if we don't take the discount, is still due within 30 days. We calculated not taking this discount as effectively paying interest uh, to the vendor at a percentage of, I believe it was, 36.7% uh, interest, which is sky high. So we definitely want to do that. So if, if a 2% discount is 36.7%. Well, 1% would be about 18.3, 18.4%, and that's very, very high too. So this is absolutely positively a false statement. Okay. More true false. It says in a perpetual inventory system, when merchandise is returned to the supplier, cost of goods sold is debited as part of the transaction. Well, let's, let's think about this. Um, why would we, why would we, we didn't sell it, we returned it to the, to the supplier. So why would we go, why would we be debiting um, cost of goods sold? What we're going to be debiting in this situation is either um, our, our actual journal entry here would either be um, accounts payable to the supplier and then a credit to inventory or something like this. Inventory is going down because we're returning it and then our debit would be cash or if we owe money we would be uh, debiting the account payable for the value of the merchandise that we return to the supplier. So this is also a false statement. Next true false question says, in a perpetual inventory system, <clears throat> merchandise returned to vendors reduces the inventory account. Well, that's, that's exactly what we have going on right here. Inventory is being credited in both of these situations, regardless of whether we paid cash or we owe for it. So, conversely, this is a true statement. All right, moving on. Multiple choice questions. It says, if merchandise sold on account is returned to the seller, the seller, the seller acknowledges the return by issuing a sales invoice, purchase invoice, credit memo, debit memo. And uh, what we said was that the seller issues a credit memo, the buyer issues a debit memo. And so if we think about that, that gives us our answer right there. Okay, a little bit of memorization here. Um, think about it though it makes sense the seller is issuing a credit so they're going to use a credit memo all right let's see what else we have here it says when a buyer returns merchandise purchased for cash it's a little bit different situation the buyer will record the transaction as a debit to inventory credit to cash well no because inventory is going down because they're returning the merchandise. Merchandise is inventory. So we're already wrong there. A debit to cash and a credit to inventory. 
Well, they paid cash, so they should be getting cash back. So this looks right. We're going to increase cash, but inventory is going down, and so we're going to do that with a credit. So choice B is going to be our answer. Next question says, sales to customers who use bank uh, credit cards such as MasterCard and Visa are generally treated as what type of sales? Sales on account, sales returns, cash sales, sales when the credit card company remits the cash. Well, remember, we're dealing with um, the accrual basis of accounting throughout this course. So that that's kind of makes D wrong. The choice, the uh, correct answer is going to be cash sales. And the reason is because the, you know, credit card processing companies, we're going to assume that they're, they're good for it. Uh, they generally deposit those funds into our account, uh, these days, probably in one or two days. And so we're just going to go ahead and, uh, consider that to be a cash sale. And then later, if you recall, any types of, uh, fees associated with the privilege of taking those uh, credit cards, debit cards. We're going to expense that out probably uh, once or twice a month. All right. Let's see here. What is the next question? It says, what is the normal balance of the following accounts? So um, these are some, you know, we've talked about normal balances in previous chapters. But we have some uh, new uh, accounts that maybe we haven't looked at. So what we're talking about is, are we talking about a debit or a credit? That's how those two are abbreviated. A, sales tax payable. I don't remember telling you anything about sales tax payable in this chapter, but it is a payable, yes, and all payables are liabilities, therefore... I'm just going to put a C here for credit. Inventory is an asset, and all assets, um, you're not counting contra assets, but regular assets, all assets have a normal debit balance. Delivery expense, we talked about expenses, and we said that all expenses have debit balances. And that makes sense because when we recognize an expense, one of two things is happening. Either an asset is going down or a liability is going up. Cost of goods sold. What is cost of goods sold? What is it? Cost of goods sold is an expense. And if that's the case, cost of goods sold has a debit balance, normal debit balance. Customer refunds payable. Well, it's the exact same thing as sales tax payable. They're different accounts, completely different. But the key word is payable. That's a liability. Therefore, it has a normal credit balance. Estimated returns inventory. This is a contra account uh, designed to essentially... Uh, work together when we're we're estimating returned inventory here so this is uh if you know if we think about it what are we doing to inventory when we set up this estimated returns inventory do you remember we're effectively making an estimate of reduction so if we reduce inventory which is an asset we would do that with a credit Therefore, estimated returns inventory must have a normal debit balance. Review that concept if it causes you trouble. And then finally, sales. Sales over on the income statement has a credit balance. Any type of revenue, sales, fees earned, whatever, credit balance. Why? Because the other side of that transaction is either going to be cash or accounts receivable both of those are assets. We used our debit up uh, on the cash or on the account receivable, whichever the case may be. Let's see here. It looks like we have one more question, and then we'll call this, we'll cut this video off. 
says the entry to record the return of merchandise uh, from a customer would include a debit to sales. Hmm, let's see here. Sounds to, seems to me like, uh, if anything, sales are going down. Credit to sales sounds like a pretty good answer, but let's think about this. Debit to customer refunds payable and debit to estimated returns inventory. So we would have, we would have, uh, we would have set this up with an estimate of customer refunds payable. Okay. When they return it, we set this up how with a credit. So when the actual returns happen, we're actually reducing this liability. And what do we do to reduce a liability? We debit it. Okay. So if you're tempted to click or to, to circle choice B, I get where you're coming from. But if we set this up, if we set this, this liability up, then the correct answer is C. That is the, that is the best answer here. Now, if we never, if we didn't do everything correctly and we didn't set this up, then I suppose B could be the answer. But for our purposes, C would be the right answer. Okay, All right, we'll get this video over and start the uh, next part of this handout.